doing this all by myself it takes a second for YouTube to get to get going here. Okay, we are live. Post this here. Post this here. And we are about as live as live can get. All right, let me just post this here. Brian, good morning to you. I heard Friday that you and Matt actually, or Matt, I don't know who, which one, but you guys figured out the, um, the VWAP. I can't wait to start using it. Very much looking forward to it. Good morning, good morning. Cam, good morning. Robert, Dave, Timothy, good morning. How are you doing, Timothy? I haven't talked to you in a while. You haven't been very vocal lately. Adam, Blair, nice to see you, Blair. Elizabeth, Scott, Assam, David. Wow, we got a lot of people here. Good morning and good morning. And uh, let me just post this real quick here. Remember, folks, we have things that sponsor these events here, and these are it. Let me just post them here for you. Don't miss out my VIP room. That's happening at noon. And Jacques, how are you, Jacques? And uh, don't forget uh, a, a class that I'm doing with uh, Graham. You know, Graham started out as my assistant almost, a, I mean, it was a long time ago, seven years ago, six years ago. Time flies. But uh, boy, oh, boy, he's, uh, I told him he was going to do very well. Graham actually put together my, uh, my, Viet, not my uh, one of my classes for me, the, the, the PowerPoint. I still have it, the boot camp. So this Wednesday, he's going to be talking about AI stocks. I'll be joining him. We're going to be talking about big momentum ahead. Join us 1 p.m. Eastern time. Hey, PJ, how are you? Good to see you here. Dr. Serena, good morning. I hope everybody had a great, great weekend. I went to a birthday yesterday at um, one of those, uh, I don't remember the name, but it's one of those Brazilian steakhouses where, where you eat a lot of meat. And I don't eat a lot, and I don't eat a lot during the day, and I ate a lot of meat yesterday during the day, I now realize why I don't do that. I was comatose. I mean, I was just done with for the entire day, <laughs> but it was so good. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. All right. I think it's a great time to start. Usually I start once we have 100 people in the room. We have about 104. Let's get into it. And that's right, Delbert. Happy, happy Monday, everyone. All right. So um, to start things off, as you guys could see here, oh, I'm not sharing my screen. Let me share my screen. It's only fun when we share. Okay, now we are sharing my screen. I think YouTube has a a delay of about eight seconds, if I'm correct, but um, not so sure. But I think it's about an eight or a 10 second delay, but you guys should be seeing my screen now. Um, good morning, Gary. How are you? Good, Richard. Good. Good morning to you, too. <laughs> Gave up a lot of – yeah, Adam, I think I have to – I don't eat a lot of meat. My wife doesn't eat meat at all, so we don't eat a lot of meat. But sometimes, you know, it's just hard to say no, you know. Okay, let's get into it, guys. We, we really do have a lot to talk about today. Um, as you guys can see here, the market is down. Both the NASDAQ and the Dow are down, not one versus the other, which we've had that rotation last week, which I didn't like, which, which never leads to anything good. Now, uh, as much as I hate to say I told you so, and I, I – you know, usually when I say I told you so, it's not it, it's not a good thing. It's a bad thing. And uh, look at the number of stocks making a 90-day breakout right now. 142 versus 24. Just to remind you what this looked like yesterday, uh, Friday or Thursday Eve, 495. You guys remember that little lecture I gave you guys, how when this number gets into the 400s, it usually doesn't sustain itself. It went from 233 to 464, all the way to 495, and now we're back at 142. And just to show you an, an example, look at 20-week highs. We have 45 stocks making 20-week highs as of Friday night. And yes, and wait, let me show you this number as of, it was 150. Now that number is, is 45. So Big, big difference, big, big difference, big difference in momentum. Now, it's one thing when it's a big surprise, but uh, I remember telling you, all of you, very, very clearly, and if anybody wasn't here Thursday or Friday, I remember talking about the 90-day high 
and the 90 day low and how significant this number gets when it gets up to the 400s and 490s. And uh, you could see that now that number is at 142. And 142 is definitely not uh, it's definitely not 495. So you had three times as many stocks driving the market to the upside as you did on Friday. This is fr Friday. This doesn't include this morning, okay? So um, very, very important, something you should watch for obvious reasons because it works really well. How long have I been using this stat, this, this, these, these two guides? For probably 10 years now, every single day. So it's not something I back tested. It's just something I watch every single day, just like I watch my sectors and I could see which ones are in line. It's from it's from just doing this every single day over and over and over and over and over again and looking at this so that you guys don't have to. But do you guys remember me talking about 90 day highs and 90 day lows last week and the significance of it and what happens when the market gets a little too toppy with almost 500 stocks? I hope you guys do. If no, if you guys don't remember that, please watch the, the morning video from Friday. Uh, but here we are. Volatility. Volatility is up by almost 4.5% uh, as of Friday afternoon. It's spiking. I think volatility is going to come back to this level. Do I think volatility is going to go beyond 15? Probably not. But it's a good time to have a little bit of a shakeout in the market. Large caps earnings are... Um, uh, pull back, possibly Adam, I'll get into that. I'll get into that today. So, so as you guys can see, volatility is definitely on the rise. So volatility is on the rise. I'll talk about key levels on the S and P in a minute. Crude oil, crude oil is at the 15 day EMA. We had our first top. Usually when we have a mountain, you want to be on this side of the mountain, not on this side of the mountain. The only exception is the first pullback after a swing high. The second pullback I don't like, but the first pullback I do. This is the eight-day EMA. Uh, as long as we bounce back above and make a higher high, I will remain bullish on crude oil. Um, the only thing about crude oil is, let me just take a look at something here. Let me look at volume. Yeah, we're still, okay, we're still in the May contract. Let me just take a look at volume here. Oops. Got to watch this crude oil carefully. One second, guys. I want to... Okay, here we are. May. All right. I want to look at the contract that has the most volume. I have been talking about it for years, George. You're right. And you know what, George? I'm going to keep talking about it for that much longer because it, because it works. If it didn't work, I wouldn't be talking about it. <laughs> so, yeah, you could see here... Um, I wanted to switch contracts because the volume was really cooling off on the other contracts. So you got to have the most lively contracts. So volume is still good, uh, but they'll keep your keep your eye on volume. Also, remember, this week is a fragmented week. It's a four day week. Anytime you have a four day week, you're going to have uh, you're going to have less momentum in the market and more choppiness. It's just the way it is. Or sometimes more selling pressure. But typically, you don't have a real strong upside momentum on a fragmented week. Does it matter if the if the if the fragmentation happens on a Monday or a Friday? No, it's just the way it always is, and I don't understand why. Probably because a lot of hedge funds just take time off or program their algos to trade lighter because there's less liquidity coming into the market because it's a shorter week. Also, it could be because a lot of these funds use the vol they what they do is they measure cumulative volume, and then when they look forward and they see the market's going to be closed, they take 15, 20 percent of the volume away. So it causes them to input less volume back into the market. Basically, they use the current volume levels to dictate how much volume they should be pumping into the market and because they don't want to upset the market and they don't want to distort volume. And when they see a four-day week, they just take 20% off the top when they go in because these, these algos are programmed in advance. And no, what I'm telling you about right now, you're not going to learn from a trading 101 class. I'm explaining to you how real institutions trade. And uh, this week later on in my VIP room, I'll explain further how they use the VWAP to uh, to target trades that you guys need to and, and how they go from how they make sure they don't overpay. OK, we do, Richard. Bargain Hunter does need a good week. Big time, big time, uh, big time. OK, so uh, bond market, bond market. You guys, I hope you guys remember what I what I mentioned last week. I mentioned we're going to try to huff and puff 
Uh, this is the Fed data that got us huffing and puffing. I And I told you last week on Wednesday when this came out, or uh, Friday when this came out, I said I have no idea why the it's bullish, but we have to respect this triangle, and the odds are we're going to come back to this area right here and start coming down. I don't think we're going to break the triangle because the sentiment towards uh, lower rates is declining. It's not increasing. It's declining. It's lower than it was. It's, it's about the same or lower than it was a week ago. Remember, every week that goes by as we get closer to May and the kid doesn't get his bike, it's going to be a big, 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 big problem. So uh, bond market, it tried to huff, it tried to puff, and now it's already filling the gap. Matter of fact, if you look at the bond market, this is the intraday bond market. You could see this is the hourly, one month hourly. You could see it tried right here. It tried to huff and puff, and it just broke straight down and uh i'm looking for this to come back into this range right here uh, as i mentioned volatility is on its way up i'm expecting volatility to go higher because the s p 500 is starting to show some cracks in its foundation i hope you guys remember i drew this for you guys on friday um i uh I drew this for you. Excuse me. Uh, oh, allergies. I drew this for you guys on Friday, uh, and I posted it in the public Telegram channel. And now I'm doing exactly the same thing and showing you this line right here. And I said, if on Monday we break below the current level on the SPY, the next level down is below 517. I'll do a full update on Monday morning. Well, guess what we're doing right now? This is what I – this line right here is this line right here, okay? So – I hope you guys could see how transparent I am, and I don't move forward without first going back. Um, uh, <laughs> all right. So uh, the next level on the SPY, as you guys could see right now, and I would be writing this down, is we're, we're, it looks like we're going from 520 all the way to 517, 518, this level right here. If we break this level or go into this level, there's a lot of there's a lot of trading range in here. There's a lot of action here, and we can end up being here for quite some time unless we transverse and go traverse, excuse me, traverse and go into here. But if we move into here, the odds are we're going to touch this level. So um, keep your eye on the spy. Keep your eye on this level right here near the five, the high or mid five seventeens. It's right now at five nineteen fifty six. And it looks like it can come down all the way down to 508. So, but first, it has to it has to break this level. If it doesn't break this level, if it just bounces off this level, we're going to create a new trading range right here. Although I'm not as uh, uh, I'm not as uh, I, I believe we're going to come into this range. There's not a lot here, you know. There's not a lot here. This is based on news, and I said I think we're going to come up here, uh, shake, shake get a bunch of stops triggered, and then come right back down, I feel that way. So the next level I feel we're going to be moving into is 517.74-ish or back to 521, although I'm not optimistic there. Uh, looking at the QQQ, hey, Penny, how are you? Good to see you. All right, looking at the QQQ, we are already this morning at that level. We are already there. We already passed this level, and we are already in this level. That le Remember, everything here I drew last week. There's nothing new here for you, all right? There's no, there's no new lines. There's no new levels. We're, we're One thing I'm going to tell you guys, I'm going to teach you guys something right now, very, very important. I know, I know you guys cheat on me. I know I'm not the only guy you watch, okay? If you ever watch guys like me do what we do, and you see people moving and jumping from one thing, and then next week they're on to another thing, and then they move on to another thing, and then they move on to another thing. You don't want those. You want the guys that are going to continue every day going back, going back, and saying, this is what we did. Do we, do we still stand by this? This is what we did. Do we, do we stand by this? You want someone who's going to continue that story not jump back and forth and go all over the place. Those folks aren't focused on, 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 on linear. They're not watching the market unfold like a story. I watch the market unfold like a story. So for me, every day is a continuation of the past. So it's kind of like watching a movie and, and not seeing it for two weeks and not seeing the, 
the, you know, like, hey, in last episode, we saw this. If you don't know what happened, if you don't have context, it's hard to go forward. So always make sure if you're watching somebody and following somebody, make sure that the, like Kramer, have you noticed Kramer? He's always talking about random things. He's always just throwing things out. He's not going back and saying, hey, last week I said this, 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 this. How did it, how did it play out? That's, you want accountability, okay? That, very, very important. I, I learned this very long time ago. There's a lot of guys in the business who are good, but those are the guys that are going backwards to go forward, not guys that are always moving forward without going back. So it's very important if you guys – that's a fast way to find out if somebody's full of shit, okay? Are they just moving it forward without going back and forgetting everything they just said last week and it's a clean slate every day? That You don't want that. That's, that, that, that's somebody who's just not – notice, I haven't changed my lines. They're the same lines. We're going off of the same lines. We're continuing the story from Friday, the 90-day breakouts. We're continuing the story. Um. Thank you, Tony. The only guy I care to. <laughs> Thank you. But but seriously, but you know, there's there's always, you know, hey, Roger had three bad trades. Screw him. Let's go watch this guy. Just whoever you watch, make sure that the person always talks in context, not just, hey, we're gonna go to this movie. Today we're gonna watch this movie. Tomorrow we're gonna watch that movie. And the next day we're gonna watch it. Whoa, you're all over the place. That so so please make sure that whoever you follow has a a very strict guidelines and that everything makes sense. All right. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. So we're already in, remember, and uh, if you haven't, please rewatch the videos. I drew these a long time ago. So we're now back at this level right here. The level is 444. Uh, we are kissing this level. I don't think we're going to go back up. And by the way, by the way, I don't know if you guys noticed, this is the all-time high on the NASDAQ. Uh, this is important. I've been meaning to tell you this, and I forgot last week, last Friday. So I'm glad I, I, remind, I reminded myself. Look at the all-time high on the NASDAQ. Whoop! All, and then coming right back down. So look, we've been in this range forever, right? We, we, we go, it's like it, it poked its head out like this. And then it came right back down where the SPY, the SPY actually traded. Look at this. The SPY actually stuck its head out. Look, all this is an all-time high, right? Where QQQ, it just poked its head out and it came right back in. And that's and that told me, hey, this NASDAQ is not strong. And now this is it right here. This little area right here, right here. This is it. This is the we pe we went whoop and then came right back down. And then look, the second time we made this level, and remember, when did I draw draw this level? Not Today, I drew this level last week. And what happened on Friday after we came into this room? We touched this level perfectly, bounced off. After poking our head through, we bounced on this level. Did we go through this level? When did I draw this level? Up here. I didn't draw this level today. I drew this level mid last week. Came right to this level and then came back down and already breaking the next level down. So you could see just by the by the fact it just poked its head out. It didn't even trade above for for three quarters of the day, just like a quarter of a day, and then came right back down. Couldn't test this level, and then came back down again. And now we're already in the second tier. So the levels you want to watch on the QQQ, I don't. I I mean, look, we could go back here, but I don't think it's going to happen today. And remember, Mondays we don't usually get a bullish swoop till the second half of the day. Remember the Monday seasonality I always talk about? Is this the first time you're hearing this? What happens on Mondays, guys? Monday afternoons. See how it's all coming together, how the movie's all coming together? So if we do bounce back up, I think we're going to go down. But if we do bounce back up, remember, this is just going to be the opening. We can just come and bounce right back up. Basically, I think we're either going to be in this area right here or in this area right here for the foreseeable future. And remember, Mondays are usually, Mondays usually get bullish towards the end of the day. Friday and Mondays are bearish days. And when do we put that uh, trade uh, from that program I took over back from Celeste? Monday afternoons and get out on Monday through Friday. That's the swing seasonality. So again, you guys remember that. You guys remember that. That's how it works. So again, keep your eye on these levels on the QQQ. That level is 444. 
and 447 and a half. Uh, that's right, Adam. Late Mondays, late Mondays. Matt always trades um, and puts on trades for me for the programs. He loves Monday last half hours. And that's why you guys always get your trades on Monday late because we're waiting for that Monday turnaround and it happens really late. But please keep your eye on these levels, folks. I didn't draw them today. I drew these a while back. I drew this back here, back here. And uh, did anything change? No. I'm not drawing any new levels today, a matter of fact. So again, keep your eye on uh, 444, 15, 440, and 447, 43. On the SPY, keep your, oops, keep your eyes on, keep your eyes, which are stronger. Blue chips are definitely stronger than, than tech, and I'll explain why in, in a few seconds. Keep your eye on the 420, high 420, excuse me, 520, not 420. My mind is somewhere else. Uh, 5, 520, 521. Keep your eye on 517.70. Hey, Atlin, good morning. And keep your eye on 508.73, although I don't think we're going to hit this level today. But watch whether we hit this level, this level, and where we are. Let's do the same thing for the Dow now. All right. Woo, baby. Oh, man. Look at this thing. Uh, there's another... There's another level right here that I missed. Right there. Yeah, look at that. Whoops. The Dow stayed all, the entire day on Friday above the level. So if you were to look at the three indexes, look at the Dow. Friday stayed, uh, stayed at the current high the majority of the day. Look at the SPY. There you go, Adam. SPY stayed above the current level, at least for the day, but then broke down hard. And the QQQ on Friday barely poked its head, barely poked its head to the new level, whereas the Dow traded the entire day above the level and then came back down and broke the second level down. So very, very important. I am so, I'm so, I feel so happy that I can share this with you guys and show you this because this is what makes the difference in the morning. All right, um, economy. Economy. We do have a pretty uh, we, Friday. The market is closed. Remember, uh, wait a minute. Today is the twenty fifth. Yeah, Friday market is closed, but we do have some. We don't have the. Uh, I don't think this report is going to be very instrumental because the market's going to be closed. But speaking of the big reports, we've got GDP on Thursday. That's where the market's going to be going towards. Uh, we got durable goods. That's a big report today. We have two housing uh, housing uh, data. We've got the new home sales, and I think we have something else relating to housing. I'll look at it in a few minutes. Oh, home price index, new home sales, consumer confidence. This is a big report. Um, and I think Wednesday we're going to have a muted day ahead of the GDP. That's right, Cam. Monday is price discovery day. Also, you have consumer sentiment. Now, it's not in. it doesn't have a, a, a red highlighter, but in my opinion, this report is very, very important. And uh, I don't know. Can you guys check if the bond market's open on Friday or if everything is closed on Friday? But if the bond market is, is open on Friday, we may have some good trading going on, just not in the S&P. I may just uh, – I'm going to be in uh, Universal Studios. I'm taking my daughter to Universal Studios Friday and Saturday, so I'm not going to be here. I try to take off – I try to schedule my day to the market so that I'm with you if the market's open. But, again, new home sales today, manufacturing survey at 1030. So we probably don't want to get, go long till about 1030 today. Uh, we got durable goods. We got consumer confidence. We got GDP. This is the big one. This is a no. They should not even put a green, a red thing next to this. And then pending home sales. So a lot of a lot of housing data this week, a lot of interest rate sensitive data this week. And most importantly, GDP, which, which should finally seal the coffin on whether the kid is get, the poor kid is getting his bike uh, this year or not. I know you guys all know what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> hey, oh, by the way, Cam is here. Folks, uh, remember, we have a program called Customer Service Live. It happens between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Cam White is the moderator there. Chip is there, who's an ex-floor trader. If you guys want customer service, that's the place to go. That's really the place to go. So check it out. So anyhow, pretty busy week. Expect a, a muted Wednesday. Expect expect today to be slightly muted till we get going. 
Um, I think we're not going to get going for the first hour. Uh, I don't think the market's going to show its hand for the first hour, maybe even the couple of hours. So we want to be very careful. Uh, tomorrow is should be a pretty good day. I mean, in terms of uh, in terms of market action, we should have some volatility. Uh, hopefully, not to the downside. Wednesday muted session. Thursday GDP. Friday um, uh, bond market also closed. Yeah, Friday. Thank you, Brian. Friday not a lot of. Sometimes the the stock market's open and the sometimes the bond market's open when the bond. Sometimes futures are open even though the stock market's closed because futures and stocks are a whole different exchange. So that's the calendar for the session. Um, let me go through global economy. Then I'll go through sentiment with you. Uh, oh, my things got erased. Well, we could do them in real time here. All right. Uh, fresh batch of economic data. We talked about that. Um, something I want you guys to be mindful of today, and that's the fact that Nike and Lulu, both big retailers. Lulu is one of my favorite Crocs and, and Lulu fundamentally are my favorite uh, retailers, fundamentally, not technically, which means, um, you know, when I say fundamentally, I'm talking about holding a position for over a year, six months, long term, long term. But this is not the, the fact that Nike's down and Lulu's down isn't showing a consumer discretionary. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Just uh, re I'll, I'll remind him. I'll remind him. He will be there today, Cam, for sure. Matt and Matt will be a guest star today at, at 10 a.m. Thank you for the reminder, Cam. He will definitely be there. Yes, uh, uh, Angie, this is what I was saying. If you if you can't get a response back, go there at 10 a.m. today. That that's the uh, go there today. Go there today at 10 a.m. Angie, just go into your members area and hit the red button at 10 a.m. and tell Cam the worries in your life. So I don't like the fact that Nike slid and Lulu slid on Friday. That's bad. Remember, consumers make up two-thirds of the economy, and Nike didn't do China any favors on Friday either. We have more negative data on Tesla, another downgrade. Every time the stock tries to get it up, it can't. Um, I'll talk about Tesla in a minute, but it shouldn't be of any surprise to you. I told you exactly what I thought. It was going back into that range. And it was going to test that area and break down. What did Tesla do? It went up into the range, tested, tested the area, and now it's down again, as we predicted here on this show. Me too, me too, Angie. Yeah, get it done. Um, re here, Tesla fell, has reduced electric car production at its plant in China. This is very bad. This is very, very bad. Another thing that's bad, and I'll tell you, this is on a side note. I'm starting to see a lot of other Chinese cars in my neck of the woods. Um, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing that Lucid all over the place. I'm seeing another one. Uh, and those cars aren't looking any worse than Tesla. So I'm just, I'm just pointing it out there. Tesla is not having a good period. And there's a lot of analysts who keep downgrading it. Okay? So just FYI. We've got a lot of data this week. I've already showed you the calendar. Uh Powell is speaking. Uh, he's going to be talking, although I don't think he's going to have to say. I mean, he he pretty much told us where they're at right now. The market just doesn't want to believe it. Uh, they're going to be higher for longer. The kid still believes he's going to get his bike in, in summer, even though his parents are telling him he's more likely than not going to get it closer to the end of the year. That's probably the best analogy I can give you. There's still a 67 percent. The kid is very optimistic. He thinks there's a 67 percent chance that. The bike is coming in June. His parents think the, the bike is coming in December. Okay, I'm just kind of throwing it out there. This is remember when they there was a 68 seven percent chance that the Fed was going to lower rates in March, and now it's uh, less than zero. <laughs> so, and May was at 58 percent. Now it's 10. I think June should go down to about 10 percent, which would put the bond market back down to this level. Okay. Uh, New England pushing hard advertising. Oh, okay, all right. I'm not seeing any advertising, but I don't. I don't watch TV very much. I watch cable, but uh, I am seeing, I am seeing tons of uh, competitors, and they're actually looking pretty cool. Although I'm never going to buy an electric car till they, you know, remake the the grid and all that. Okay. Sentiment. Sentiment, sentiment, sectors. Let's look through sectors, and I'm almost done. I want to let you guys go early today. 
sentiment, short-term sector. And this afternoon, I have it on my TC2000. I have it in organized with colors, color-coded. So I'll be able to do it for you guys. But remember, as the market goes down, we get less fragmented. The market needs to come down, and it's not really there yet. But it looks like it will, and it doesn't need a lot. It needs just a couple, a couple of days. But semiconductor communication, QQQ, and consumer discretionary. Hey, that's that's these are all speculative sectors. But where's why is technology down here? Makes no sense. All of these should be down here. And why is technology next to Dow Jones? And why is the Russell next to financial and energy? So a little better, a little better, like you got home builders, semiconductors, communication. This is this is all speculative right here. This is defensive, but we still have problems. We still have the mid cap. The Russell's out of whack. Technology should be right here. If technology was right here, it wouldn't be that bad, actually. So even Friday gave us a little bit of uh, uh, a little bit of balance. Hey, Rochelle, hope you're feeling better. All right, so the market is coming down. It is becoming more balanced. Um, another two three days of it coming down, it will be balanced. But it looks look at look at it Thursday. Semiconductors are here. Russell's here. Uh, communications here. Invesco's QQQ's here. Technology's down here. Semiconductors are up here. You see how out of, out of whack it is? And then look at Friday. One down day. These are all in line. These are mostly in line. A couple of things sticking out, like technology and Russell 2000 and Bitcoin. Well, Bitcoin's kind of on, on its own island, so not too bad. Definitely moving in the right direction. Before I give you my stocks, I do want to look at Tesla. Because, oh, I got hiccups. Because I know a lot of you guys look at Tesla. So I'll I'll look at Tesla real quick. This is not Tesla. This, this is Telsa. Let's look at Tesla. This is the tr this is what I drew for you guys, and I mentioned it's going to go up, test this level, and start coming back down. It's coming back down right now, as we predicted, and I believe it's going to come lower. And my other chart, this is actually a little higher up, like this. So this is a, a breakdown. So it looks like it went back in, and now it's already coming right back down. All right, let's look at our stocks. There's a lot. It's a lot easier right now. Oh, excuse my hiccups, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, let's go through the list. I'll start with the short side first. There's a, a lot more short stocks now than there was last week. Uh, you're welcome, Ted Talk. Okay. Abbott, be careful. It's got the 100-day moving average here. That's the only issue, but that's my, that's on my short list. Remember, these are – and today in the VIP room, I'm going to take show you how I take my short list of stocks and how I turn them into day trades and how I execute those day trades. I'm going to be talking about that today in the VIP room. Uh, what to do with our credit spread? I have no idea what you're talking about, Raymond. What credit spread are you talking about, my friend? I have no idea what you're talking about. The only credit spread we have right now is on at, uh, Microsoft, and uh, it's doing really well. So I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, let me know, Raymond, so I know what you're talking about. So here's my first stock. Let me go through this for you. This is my second stock. What ticker symbol are you talking about, Raymond? Ooh, look at that, breaking the 100-day moving average nicely. CTSH. I would be copying these if I were you. I would be making a list out of these if I were you. Ooh, baby, I like that. But close to the 200-day. That's not a credit spread. That's a debit spread. LMT is a debit spread. 
Uh, team, uh, team, team, team. Watch for a further breakdown of this level right here. Otherwise, no soup. More downside first. I need to see more downside. All of these look like they're getting ready for action, which is good for you guys. It means you're not late to the party. Oh, yeah. Oh, that looks good. That looks really good. So far, this is the best one. Hey, I remember this stock. Do you guys remember somebody giving you this stock last week in the VIP room? And then the, I mean, in the uh, pit? I know you made money on it. Don't say you didn't. You did. Still on our list. Oh, this is a juicy one. The latter part of the list looks better than the beginning of this list. Oh, yeah. Choppy, but doable. Very choppy, but it's been on my list now almost every day for two weeks. And guess what? It's still on my list. Hey, we got 271 people in here. I love that. Good, good. And INST, the last one. And I'll move to the long side in a second. Oh, what a beauty right there. What a beauty. Can't believe I'm giving you these stocks for, for nothing. Um, another stock. Uh, this was a, a stock that I picked last week in the pit. Remember, I always say if I pick a stock, I, can, I expect that stock to do a lot more. I always pick my stocks based on swing trades. So we got into this stock right here, and we got out of it right here, and it kept going, and it's now setting up again. CRH. And you will notice that oftentimes I pick the same stocks day in and day out because look at this stock. You know how many times I've talked about this stock in the last month? Can't even begin to tell you. Actually, I can. You could look it up in your sheet that you should be writing every day. Another beauty. Look at that. That's a beauty right there. What a beauty. We're almost done, folks. Oh, what a beauty. What a beauty. Don't say I and, – and please, if you tell me that this is the first time you're hearing about any of these stocks, then you don't follow what I do because I've talked about these stocks, each one of them, at least five times in the last month. Tell me it ain't so. Those that follow me, tell me it's not so. Here's a new one. I think that's the first new one today, CVLT. Here's another new one. RGA, Reinsurance Group of America. What a beauty. Lincoln Electric Holdings, what a beauty. This is Eagle T Tile. Um, this is a very, very, very good tile company. Very good tile company. I used them in all of them. I used to have a. I used to do a lot of construction and home building. And I used to do custom homes in LA, and uh, we used to use Eagle Tiles all the time. Another one. And by the way, it's easy to see which stocks are moving up right now because Friday was a down day. So these stocks are really moving up if they're moving up. Yeah, really sweet, aren't they, Adam? Uh, hey, do you guys remember this stock? Do you guys remember somebody giving you this stock? And more importantly, do you guys make remember us making money on this stock in the pit? I just I just gave you guys GoDaddy was from the pit, RTX was from the pit. Um, another stock was from the pit. I don't remember which one it was. Five was from the pit, and I'm still on these stocks. This will be my third time making ball. Okay, there you go. Good, 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 good. Uh, VRT, how many times did I mention? Seriously, I'm not kidding. How many times did I mention this stock in the last month? How many times? Like 10 times, maybe 20? Probably, I probably mentioned this stock 20 times in the last month.
And do you think anything changed? No. Here's a new one for you that I'm very excited about actually today. First time on my radar. Consolidation. Look, lunch, big dinner, digesting the dinner like I was digesting that meat yesterday and finally ready to go up again. I love this stock. I love my – and remember, it's easy today to find strong stocks because Friday was a down day. So anything that popped on Friday, it looks really strong. Much easier to find strong stocks when the market's going down. Chris is still in VRT. I see you guys take my stuff very seriously, which I like. All right. Am I helping you guys make money? Wow, 287 people in the room. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Very, very cool. All right, folks, before I let you go, um, I'm sure you're already aware that AI tickers have been really doing something crazy this year. NVIDIA up 90%, SMCI 245%. Goldman Sachs thinks there's a lot of gas in the tank for AI stocks. Now, Graham believes there's a new AI stock that's poised for a massive new momentum cycle. As a result, he's perfecting a specific trading plan for targeting this ticker as soon as this week. And I'm going live with him on Wednesday. Uh, you know, Graham used to work with me. Graham and I worked together very tightly. He learned a lot from my, from my experience. Um, I'm sure he tells you guys that. It's not a secret or anything. He was my assistant many, 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 many years ago when he started. The guy is a trading shark. Check out what he's got in store for you. He knows what he's talking about. He really knows what he's talking about. He is a natural. Uh, I told him he should start trading seven years ago publicly, but he didn't listen to me. But now he's confident enough. So um, thank you, Adam. Thank you. So um, anyhow, uh, can ask you to do an online webinar in the near future on how you use hotspot stocks in trading in real time when the market's open or before the market. Yes, Sergey. Um, I'm probably going to do one next week. Um, but yes, and there's a there is a in the members area of hotspot stocks. I go through my stock fetcher code and how I combine them together. I actually did that session. It's in the members area, Sergey. But I will do it again. All right. So please, 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 please check out the class that's happening on Wednesday with Graham and I. And I will see you guys later. If there's any questions, here's my email address. Hopefully, I'm helping you make money and not wasting your time. I will see you all in the VIP room. And today, I'll show you the TC2000 and how we color, how Brian and Matt color coded uh, the short term scan for me, which is very, very cool. And uh, I'll be introducing some more stuff in the VIP room to show you how to take advantage of the trading pit today with a new, a new uh, um, pattern that I found. I'll see you guys later. I'll try, Mike. I'll try. I'll do everything possible for you. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.